Hey, Jeff with Practically Tactical. I'm here once again with Bang, Steve Fisher of Sentinel Concepts. I love it when you do that. <laughs> I know, <Just> thanks. <laughs> uh, but today we're going to be talking about light placement on a rifle, okay? Um, let's talk about it. <laughs> Lights. You need them on a gun. Just that simple. Yeah, you need Anything you're using in a defensive, offensive gun, you know, personal, home protection, property, whatever the case may be. You need to have positive threat identification, which we, we always talk about a lot. So having a white light attached to the gun, put it on the gun. It needs to be there. Where does it go, Jeff? Well, that's a good th question. I mean, I would, um, I've read, um, I typically run them on the opposite side because I want it to be a very, I mean, you know, in, in my mind, I want it to be a very, uh, um, I want to know exactly when I'm activating that light as opposed to a negligent type thing. I want it to be a conscious decision, okay. you know? Like when I'm going like this and I bring my hand over the rifle, it does obscure that sight picture a little bit. But um, I mean, if you've got a better way for me to do that, the other thing is I've got the sling right there. Correct. And the idea of that stuff, see, I don't have to cuss, uh, getting tangled, it's very, very annoying to me. Um, so, I mean, what would you think about this kind of setup? Personally, I don't like having to go thumb completely overboard and obscuring any of my field of vision. To activate a light. Now, mm -hmm. if I was running a vert grip, it'd be slightly different. I'd be holding underneath the gun. You know, I have one. I could put that on there. That's amazing. There. You could. So the other option you have is you could go to a pressure switch, mm -hmm. which you'll you'll see here on my light. I have you know same side as you, but what I have is a switch that allows me activation with either or hand, depending if I'm shooting off left side or right side of the body, or around particular pieces of cover, barricades, so forth. But you guys will be like, well, then the light has to. Well, yeah, the light has to move anyway. You have to bring it out to the left, or to the right side to clear the barricade or the obstruction that you're shooting past around anyway. So it really doesn't matter. Um, you'll see guys talk about 12 o'clock light positions. Well, I like it up top because the light's directly in line bore, all that kind of good stuff. Hey, awesome. A lot of it also comes down to you'll see guys talk about, well, if I put it on this side, there's a shadow. Well, hey, guess what, idiot? If you put it on any side of the gun, the opposite side is going to have a shadow anyway. Yeah, I, that whole, like, <laughs> shadow thing is... Okay. Yeah. There's... If you're looking at the shadows and you're worried about the shadows, you're not seeing what needs to be looked at, where the light needs to be projected, and what is beyond or in the path of that light. So stop worrying about shadows. Put the light on the gun and have it on the gun in a spot that's accessible to you easily for you to activate the light under stress in an emergency when you need to do so. For me, generally, most of my carbines, and that's a lot of them, I run pressure switches. Mm -hmm. This one's set up as a dual output. That's a, that's a nice pressure switch, by the way. Yeah, this is this is only intermittent use, so I either have to hold it down to activate the white light and keep it held for constant on, or I can simply hit it for you know a flashing technique or strobing or whatever intermittent lighting, Okay, mm -hmm. which is as we prefer it. So that's one option that gives me ambidextrous control over the light. You could do the same thing with that, but you're still reaching over and under the gun at times. Well, I love the idea of this, and I've never seen that. Is that a new type of pressure? Switch? No, Surefire's had this switch out for years. It activates with my D-Ball, PEC-15, other laser and aiming devices. One thing you mentioned is the sling. Yeah. So you've got an MI rail on your gun, I see, which is yeah. awesome. We just uh, upgraded your gun recently to that. Mm -hmm. Dave Lobert of Defensive Creations uh, uh, Gunsmithing put that on there. Really appreciate it. Check him out. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was like coming from the stone. It was modernizing this rifle. Correct. You know, um, and I really, really like this rail. It's super lightweight. Um, you know, my thing was I was I, uh, th this rifle, which I've had like forever, is a uh, carbine length gas system. And I had just traditional Knight's Armament rails mm -hmm. on there, which were Good like system. Yeah. back in the day, that was yeah. like the thing, you know. Um, but really, I was I was getting to the point where I was at the limit of what the gear would allow me to do, right. especially given that I like the having my hand all the you know as close to the muzzle, uh, you know, more sure. or less sure. as, as possible because I love the stability that it gives me. So, taking what we did was we just. Burned off that front, you know, well, actually, with a lot of anger, uh, <laughs> dremeled off the front sight. I did it yeah. while Steve held it, and then Dave, we took it to Dave the next day, and he cleaned it up real nice, cold blue Um And I'm really, really happy with this rail. And the other thing that I love about it is how slim it is. Yeah. You know, I love being able to really wrap my hand around there and, and mitigate that recoil as best as possible. It gives you a little bit more physical control over the gun, more placement from what you had originally. So, you ready for some mind-blowing science shit about moving that light around? Yeah, sure. Under your QD uh, detachment on your sling up front. Push that button, you think? I'm always bad at this. I know. But I like buttons. Put so it right there. I, you know, I've never run a sling this close. And guess what? It's good. Works. Now you can reach and activate your light without a tangling. Oh, well, look at that. You, you know, you learn something <laughs> new every day. And 
you know, I have no shame. You know what I mean? I, I don't care. He told me to do that. I'll try it. And, and now it clears it. And so what happens is this. We tell guys, when white placement, gear placement on a gun is to get your gun, build your grip on the gun, then accessorize around that grip. Mm. So I, I like to find optimal placement of my gun. My gun, you know, my offhand, it controls the gun, which is about, you know, part way down. Here, so now, okay, cool. That's where my mark is. So I'm like, okay, my pressure switches are here. Right. I can activate my light, my laser. Even if this were to go down, I can still activate fire control on the laser. You know, backup sights, everything is out of the way. Mm. So everything I need is placed where my natural grip is on the gun, wherever I naturally mount the gun, and that's where I build all the accessories. Okay. But for light placement, again, like we talk about, guys are like, well, 12 o'clock is better, or 6 o'clock is better, or 3, 9, get over it. Put a light on the gun. You'll deal with the problems as they come. Question for you. Yeah. Um, so, so as far too, let's talk about you know having the light forward of the muzzle, mm -hmm. behind the muzzle, stuff like that, in line with the muzzle. What are your thoughts on? That? I prefer to have my my actual light, the bezel light, pressed slightly back away from the muzzle device. Uh, carbon buildup, gases, all those things. Guys who run muzzle brakes, which you know I run one too a lot of times. Nothing wrong with that at all. But that concussive force at some point, depending on the lights you have, can either, A, if you're running older incandescent lights, can end up shattering the filament, the bulb from that blast. The carbon, the gas buildup will obscure the lens a lot faster. So some guys will actually push it past. Well, the thing that I find pushing it past the muzzle a lot of times is that, you know, if you're inside a structure, a building, something, now you're you've just effectively overall adding overall length and a better chance of snagging and bumping it against something where the muzzle actually gives you a little bit of standoff room mm. from the light. The other thing that I like, if you notice, I've got the MI light mount rail, how tight it fits to the actual rail. That is awesome, by the way. Yeah, I, it, I want one of those. Yeah, it's, absolutely. It brings the light in super tight in the rail. If I was actually to bump this back further to the rail spacing, the head of the light of the Surefire Scout will just barely clear that. I mean, like dollar bill clearance. Mm. So it brings it in nice and tight to the gun. That way I don't have to worry about it hanging off to the side like like yours is currently in that mount to where if I do hit it on something or it snags, right. you can put enough force and torque on that to potentially rip the rail out, the, that section or the light. Yeah, and, and truth be told, this was what I had Absolutely. On, yeah. on the other one, so I just happen to have it. I didn't. I don't have one of those floating around, but I will. Add, I mean, I love the idea of everything nice and compact and trim. I mean, you could see, I mean, I've got uh, probably an inch and a half, an inch and three quarters of distance for stuff to catch whatever it may be. Exactly. And I, I hate that. Yeah, <laughs> things just <laughs> happen. Know? It's yeah. going to happen sooner or later. Absolutely. So, Again, getting the light in nice and tight to the to as close to the body of the gun as possible. Mm -hmm. Having a good light is critical. Keeping the lens clean on the light. Just put it on the gun. Leave it on the gun. Stop worrying about where it's mounted, and just deal with the problems as it comes. Because it's really not a problem. It's all perception. You know, guys. Mm -hmm. Well, if I have to work the right side of the barricade, my light's on the left side. Mm -hmm. So you lean a little further out. You have a gun. <laughs> oh wow! That brings me to my next point, which is where can somebody, by God, learn how to utilize their light in conjunction with their mm. rifle or their pistol man there's a lot of places that do it i'm, I'm going to be brutally honest uh, uh -huh. we're actually here at the alliance police training facility in ohio we'll, we're actually teaching uh low light carbine low light handgun this weekend uh starting tonight actually and i can't wait i'm going to be a student in there it's going to be awesome having you back in the line again dude it really is so uh, seek out good quality training uh you know 88 tactical has some great stuff uh myself uh, you, you know th there's just a whole plethora of trainers out there that, that have really good takes on lights, lights and lighting employment, how to use the lights, how and when to and not to use them. So just seek out good quality training, scour the internet on some good forms, look for the after action reports, mm -hmm. find find good quality training on them, but find practical training. Absolutely. Something that's actually applicable to what you do every day. If it's a house gun, get into a home defense class with it. If, it, if it's a you know truck gun, farm toy, you know, whatever the case may be, but get training in its use and proper training. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is, um, you know, definitely seek out some great training. Uh, go to sentinelconcepts.com to learn more about what Steve Fisher's offerings are and where he's gonna be. Um, because we're on the Alliance PD range, why not? I'm gonna go ahead and cinch this down, make the adjustments, be, considering that we, we changed the position of the sling, and let's burn one down. You guys wanna see some shooting? Yes! Everybody oh, okay. wants to see shooting. Everybody wants to be sh see some shooting. All right, so we're firing some 55 grain brass case full metal jacket uh, ammo from Great Lakes Ammo. Go into the description box to get the promo code and get some, well, some money off some ammo. Everybody likes that. I really like it. <laughs> Thanks for watching.